Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. In today's full length featured review will be going over the brand new Gigabyte Aero 17. So let's start off with a brief summary of what this laptop represents. In a nutshell, it's a 17 inch laptop so you got the larger screen real estate, but it's really thin, really light and very high powered. That's a common calling card for the gaming laptops that we see all the time. But this particular laptop is actually targeting more of a hybrid market where they're really trying to seek and cater towards content creators and media professionals. So we'll go ahead and do our review in our traditional format where we're going to start things off with our unboxing. And this gives you an opportunity to see everything for the first time and exactly what you can expect if you order one for yourself. So as we proceed with our unboxing, as you saw, the laptop was front and center and it had very large foam inserts on the outside edges to keep it protected during shipping and a sleeve over the laptop itself to protect it from getting scratched from the foam padding. Next to that, the smaller box has the little drivers uh, and warranty information pamphlet. And then it has the power adapter and of course the actual cable that connects to that for your regional power. Kind of the most bare bones setup you can get for a laptop, but it is all the important things and all you really need. Now here's a close up of that power supply so you can see how many watts we get out of this. And if you can't quite read what's on screen, we have a 230 watt power supply for this particular laptop model. Now with that said, that didn't take very long at all. The unboxing is complete and we'll move on to the next part of our review. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages and media creators, here's the laptop. We get the nice huge cleaning cloth right there between the screen and the keyboard. That keeps the screen from getting scratched, but hold on to it because you can keep everything clean with it. Little badge in the bottom right hand corner to kind of tell you about some of the features that they're trying to make stand out for this laptop, such as that RGB certification and that 4K screen. So let's get things weighed in and our laptop on the scale comes in at five pounds and 13 ounces. Now the laptop does have a very long battery life, but you're gonna to wanna to take the power adapter with you in most cases and that brings your total carry weight to seven pounds and 11 ounces. Our next figure of measurement is going to be the measurements. And here we are with our ruler and coins for scale to give you the size. Now you can see the back edge is about one inch and the front edge is a little bit shorter than that, but mostly it's a pretty flat profile. Now we get to power everything on and take a look at the screen and the keyboard. And this is where things really start to look really nice. Now this is not a quote unquote gaming laptop, although it is quite the same as a gaming laptop with all the hardware it has including the RGB backlit keyboard. You got the large oversized touchpad in the center, which has a built-in fingerprint reader, by the way. The integrated left and right clicks are inside of the touchpad, not separated. And up here, just above the keyboard, you might be wondering what this is. That's an odd place to put it, but what that is is that's the integrated webcam. And what the slider is doing is it's actually a privacy door. So you can actually physically cover the webcam if you're one of those people that are worried about people spying on you. Now, one of the reasons that had to happen was this amazing screen. It has an ultra thin bezel. And because of that super thin bezel, that means there's nowhere to put the webcam up above like you traditionally see. So one of the nice things here is this is a 17 inch laptop, but because the bezel is so thin on the screen, it's almost more like a 15.6 inch laptop that you'd see in the past. So it's not too big to carry around. The ultra thin profile definitely makes it even easier to slip in and out of a bag. And of course the weight makes it easy to carry around without being fatiguing. So while we're taking a spin around, let's talk about our interfaces for connectivity. Over on the left hand side, we have the RJ45 for your local network connectivity. Next to that, an SD card reader, a USB 3.1, a microphone in, which is a 3.5 millimeter connection, headphone out, same connection type, and another USB 3.1 Gen 1. Now for the other side, going from left to right, we have a USB 3.1 port, Thunderbolt 3, the DisplayPort 1.4 and USB 3.1 combo port, HDMI 2.0 and our DC power port for charging and running off of mains power. Now let's move along and go into the system and take a look at our software. So we have the Gigabyte software, which is called the Gigabyte Control Center. And here you can see the red and black color scheme. And we have a lot of the system configuration here. 
Now granted, a lot of these are just the built-in Windows features that you can do through your control panel or other means by looking in the right places, but this gives you a way to do them all quickly, easily, in a much prettier way. And it does have some system specific things that you can't do anywhere else for this laptop. Now a perfectly good example of that would be controlling the RGB backlit keyboard. Obviously you have to do that through the Gigabyte software and not through your Windows control panel. So this is a place you're gonna stop in at least once to take a look at some of those features. So let's take a quick stop in at the device manager and see what we have installed on this laptop before we move into our benchmarks. Core i9-9980HK, one of the most high-end CPUs you can possibly get right now. The NVIDIA RTX 2070 in this laptop, it does also come with an RTX 2080 option. The 4K screen we were talking about with the 60 hertz resolution, RGB certification. This is an IPS panel, so it's a super high-end screen. Killer wireless and wired for our internet connectivity or local network connectivity. And we'll move on to our benchmarks. Now we'll run the usual gambit of benchmarks and one of those is going to be the noise levels of the system. So let's be honest, most people really don't know what decibels are. So if I said this is a 27 decibel system, you really don't know if that means it's good or bad. So the best thing to do is just check out some of our other reviews and look at similar systems and you'll know relatively speaking if it's loud or quiet. Now the reason it's making noise is it's trying to keep the system cool, so we also want to see how things look as far as temperatures. With the infrared camera here, we can see what the temperatures on the outside of the laptop look like and kind of get a little bit of an insight of where the hot spots are. The important thing to look for here is that where your hands are going to be sitting, you don't want that to be hot. That makes for sweaty hands, it's uncomfortable. The other thing is you want to see a lot of heat coming out of the system because if it's getting out of the system, it means it's cooling it. All right, so now for the most important temperature readings, that's going to be the internal sensors. Our CPU is about 36 to 38 degrees Celsius, and our GPU is at 35 degrees Celsius starting off. We're now going to put the system under load and run some benchmarks to bring it up to speed and put everything under a stressed situation, and we'll come back and retake those noise readings, and we're also going to go back and check our final temperatures. Now, generally speaking, the thinner and lighter a laptop is, when you put that kind of high-end hardware in it, the, the worse it is for handling the temperatures and the harder it has to work to keep it cool. Right now, the, the sound's not too bad at all, and we'll have to see how the temperatures come in after we get done. So while things are still humming along for that benchmark, we'll go take a second look at our hotspots with the infrared camera. And you can see there's definitely some hot spots forming near the back of the laptop, and that's where the exhaust is coming out. And this is, again, a really good thing, and it may not seem like it. You would think maybe common sense would say, if it's really hot, that's bad. It means it's getting really hot. But remember, energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transferred. So if that heat is leaving the system, that means it's cooling the system, and that's a good thing. So what this all means is that you can be rest assured that while things look a little bit strange through an infrared camera sometimes, this is definitely not leaked footage from Area 51 of an alien spacecraft. And nothing top secret, this is just a normal laptop review, and it's just about time for us to check in with our benchmark results. And here we are, the scores are in. 15,140 on Firestrike, a very respectable score. Of course, temperatures did go up, our CPU went up to about 88 degrees Celsius max. The GPU, a little bit more chilly than that, 69 degrees Celsius max. Honestly, those are very good temperatures, especially for being a thin and light laptop. So we mentioned a little bit that this is a definitely a, a, a hybrid laptop. It could be a gamer laptop, it could be a production laptop, it really could be either one, but they're definitely pushing the creator piece of it here with the screen. They're, they have a demo built right in to show off the HDR and the great colors and the IPS panel. Now gamers sometimes shy away from 4K resolution and the 60 Hertz refresh rate because you don't get the fast response time for gaming and the higher pixel count is harder to drive at good frame rates for games. So that piece of it is definitely creator focused, but the hardware is very gamer focused, and of course you can always tune down your resolution, and 60 hertz is enough for most people. Now we're not quite done yet with our benchmarks, we still have Cinebench R15, and that'll run fairly quickly with that really fast CPU just crunching away at this. And here you go, 129.09 frames per second, a really great score. 
And we'll look at our little scores down here as well on our chart for basically overall ranking. So moving along at a quick pace, we're down to the last portion of our review, which is going to be the minor disassembly of the system. You can see there's a lot of good openings there at the bottom, which is probably one of the reasons the cooling is so good. And we'll have to take all those screws around the outside out to get this apart. So many small screws later, the bottom cover will come off and reveal the inside technology. Now be advised if you're going to take apart your laptop that you could void your warranty and you definitely don't want to mess anything up if it's a brand new laptop. So possibly order upgrades through us and we can take care of it for you and it'll still be covered under your warranty. As for what's inside, NVMe SSD, which is great. We have our two system RAM slots right here in the center, fully occupied with 32 gigabytes of RAM in total. Nice black heat pipe system, two cooling fans, our large capacity battery. And our little speakers. Now, if you're specifically looking for something that can be upgraded, there is an NVMe SATA slot right there above the left speaker where you could add additional storage. So that's one potential upgrade. Other than that, there's nothing else to take the system apart further for as far as upgrades. So the reviews always give us an opportunity to perform mad science and take these things all the way apart. And we're just doing that for demonstration purposes, just to show you everything that's in the system. Definitely not recommended to try to do this on your own, but we want to show you what's inside if you actually unbury it all. So under that nice heat pipe system, this is where we're going to find our CPU and GPU more or less focused towards the center. As you can see, the video card is not an MXM slot, so it's part of the motherboard and it can't be changed. So make sure that if you don't want the 2070 and you might want to upgrade to the 2080 one day, order the one you want definitely up front first. And that, my friends, was a lot of talking, but a great review, and we hope you enjoyed it. Everything is complete, and we hope the video was able to satisfy your urge to see what's going on with this new laptop. Great performance, great specs, great size, great weight. I mean, everything is really good about it. And if you're interested, the best thing to do is to go look at the video description, and there we have all the product page links. So you can go check out the full pricing availability and the full system specs. Now, if the video didn't answer all of your questions, feel free to ask any additional questions down there in the comment section of the video, and we'll answer those questions for you and anybody else that might have the same question. That doesn't mean if you need one-on-one -on -one help that you should stay quiet. Definitely reach out to us by phone or email if you need any additional assistance, and we'll get with you one-on-one. -on -one. So with everything said and done, we are now at the very end of the review, and we just want to remind everybody once again, this was Gentech PC, and we'll see you next time.